Hey everybody, how's it going today? Welcome to Precision Machine Shed. What I've got here is something that I've been meaning to do for a while, but I'm uh, going to finally do it. So This is a barrel receiver I got. and It was actually a whole rifle at the time, but I took the stock off. And uh, We're going to do a few things to this guy. Number one, I don't like this is a stainless barrel and it got bead blasted. I really don't like that look. It's, I don't know, for hunting, I guess, it blocks the sheen, but I don't like it. So we're going to fix that, and then this crown has a hunting crown on it, but it looks horrible. We'll, uh, I'll show you what this thing looks like, and we'll get some before and afters of uh, how to do this. So I'm going to show you how to do a target crown on your lathe. So hang tight, and let's get started. All right, here is our crown. As you can see... Um, it's a nice recessed crown, however, when they came in here and did this, they did two things that I don't really like. First off, they got a chamfer in here, which there's really no need for that. And I got crap on my little pointer here, but there's no need for that little chamfer in there. And this is quite visible, you can see it. Um, the recess radius here is good. I don't know what their angle here is, but, you know... 11 degrees or whatever you'd like it to be. Um, I take that back, sorry, this is going to be more like um, 40 degrees or something like that. And then, as you can see here, this is a very rough cut down here. This is a very, very sloppy, sloppy, I don't know if they had a dull bit or whatever they did here, but it's it's not good. <clears throat> this angle right here, this is just 90 degrees to the bore. So this is just a flat. This in here, this is just a flat. And this is your 45, 40 degrees, whatever it could be. And this is approximately, um, we can measure it. You usually, well, I'll, I'll measure it here in a minute. You can usually kind of set your own depth. But I'll just take a quick reading here with a depth caliper. I'm guessing it's about a... 50 thousands, and that's an okay depth. This guy is, what are we at? Just over 700 thousands at the muzzle here, so. We're gonna try and fix that guy because that's horrible and, and I don't like it, so let's fix it. All right, next step in this process, what I did is I got this receiver stripped down and I'm gonna take the barrel off the action, but first, one thing you wanna note, um, Whoever did this uh, head spaced it and the barrel is timed so what we want to do is make sure we have a mark and we do not have a mark here, a witness mark. You can see there, uh, it's just a little speck of dust there but so all we're going to do is take, uh, there's a number of ways to do this but here's just a pointy little punch, line that guy up and I got a nice point on there. So we're just going to line it up, if I could stay on there, and make sure you got a solid backing. Put a little punch on there, and I got a punch, so I'm going to do one more just to sink it in there. And that should be good enough, so that'll give us a little witness mark there to reference back to once we crank this barrel back on. All right, what we're going to do next is here's my barrel vise, and I got a bunch of different size bushings for different size barrels. And we got an action wrench. They make these in several different types. They also make ones that uh, go internally and work off the lugs. But being that our receiver here is in pretty good shape, and somebody, I, I'm betting they parkerized this one because it kind of looks like parkerizing. It could have been blued, but... Uh, I think the guy that ended up doing this rifle likes to parkerize stuff. Because I know I, th I bought this rifle thinking it was somebody else's work. And what I think it ended up being is a copy of somebody else's work. 
Uh, they did a pretty good job except for there's a few things that the guy that originally did these didn't do, which makes me kind of suspect of uh, either it was modified after he worked on it or somebody tried to copy his work and did a fairly decent job. <clears throat> Alright, so of course our action wrench, nothing much to these guys. And I put a couple wraps of masking tape around the receiver just to try and prevent any marring. And we'll make sure to get this on there the right way. Alright, <clears throat> so I had to make a new bushing. So here's our bushing that'll fit our, our vise and hopefully it'll fit our barrel if I know how to measure. this on a mounted on a wood bench on the corner. It's not really the best spot to have this vice bolted to, but when I put it on at the time it was it worked. So we're gonna cinch that down real good. Let's see how tight this is. We'll back you up here a little bit. See how tight this barrel is on here. Not too bad. up just a little bit. Sometimes if you have too much pressure on these wrenches you can put pressure on your receiver. Ooh, and I'm already not liking what I see here but um, I'll take this off and then we'll go take a look at what we got here. All right we got a nice little surprise here. So this is not what you want to see when you pull a barrel off. When I Originally got the first few threads loose. I thought well. Hey, maybe somebody put some red uh, like axle type grease in there, which It's not the best thing, but it's not the worst thing either. I mean it'll usually clean out But then I tried to rub it off and no, I didn't and then I tried to Scratch it off and no Nothing So what is this? Well, somebody had the bright idea to put red Loctite in there. And why would they do that, you ask? Well, probably because when they cut their threads, and I can see it here, and this is really their only saving grace with a square thread, is their external diameter, which we should measure it here, is pretty close. However, <coughs> The internal diameter is way too deep. So I'm going to back out here and we'll try. Uh, um, these end fields should be about 1.120 on the major. We're going to get a rough estimate here 1.119. So that's pretty close. We'll get a more accurate measurement here. One point one one seven. One point one one six and a half actually. <clears throat> so it's a few thousands narrow on the major diameter. And when I look in close here, I don't know if you can see it. But I can see the bottom of the threads. Let's see if we can get a little chunk of this out of here. <clears throat> the bottom of the threads to the top of this Loctite. Let's see if we can get a measurement and see how far off he was. The sad thing about this is I bought this rifle thinking it was built by one guy, which I know he does. Uh, he's gone now, but he did bench rest quality work. And. Uh, he would never do anything like this. 
Well, I'm not going to be able to get it out of there, but I am i don't know what I'm going to do with that. What I might actually end up doing is leaving it. Only reason is the threads are in pretty good shape other than they're dimensionally off. The major diameter is relatively close. It's a few thousands off, but it's okay. It's obviously worked thus far. Um, the real problem with these threads right here is his minor diameter is, I'm guessing, 10 to 15 thousandths too deep based off what I see here with this Loctite. So that's that. Never what you want to see. If this was any worse, if these were like um, 55 degree V threads, these would be junk. Cut it off, redo it. Um, but being that they're square threads, they'll work only because his major diameter was pretty close. Um, I'll probably get in here and measure his width too, but I think it's pretty close. Let's see. Yeah, see, you can see there's a little bit of wobble there. A little bit of wobble. And then, hey, once I get up to the Loctite, wait a minute. Holy, that's nice and tight now. So I might end up leaving that there. As much as I hate to do it, all it's doing is referencing the center line, which defeats the whole purpose of threading like this, but I would never do something like this. If I did this, I would cut it off, rethread, rechamber. Um, being that I don't have a 22.6 uh, chamber reamer, I'm just going to leave this be for now because, like I said, he's got the person I bought it from had several hundred rounds down it, and who knows how it, he said it shot okay, but we'll see. So as much as I, I'll probably cut this off and redo it later, but <clears throat> problemo number two, I'm going to switch camera angles. All right, <clears throat> here's the feed cone, and on an infield, spring field, a couple others, it's usually about 40, 45, I think they spec it out as, sometimes 42, whatever, it's in that range. But look at that, there's, that just looks horrible. There's a nice nick right there, a little nick. And this is just all sorts of screwed up. I think what happened here is, you can see there, they made one extractor cut, it was off a little bit. And when they tightened the barrel down, hey, it didn't work, so let's just throw another extractor cut in there, no big deal. Customer will never know. <clears throat> and then what I something happened here where they there's um, I can see it and I can feel it there's one angle here and then there's a second angle here why they did that I have no idea there's absolutely no reason for that this should be one straight cut look at that that's how much it wobbles one straight cut all the way across there <clears throat> and then I'm not sure I'm gonna have to check bolt clearance on this guy too because there might be some bolt clearance issues here too um, and I might have to increase my angle a little bit here but I I can't go deeper than this here I can go deep I can go uh, more of an angle out here but I, I gotta I can't take any more down into the chamber than what they're at here so you have to make up out on the outside here <clears throat> it's not a big deal We'll check it. If nothing else, I'll just make one cleanup cut across there and do that. I got this barrel set up in my lathe, and what I have here is a three jaw buck chuck. So it's an adjustable three jaw. And what I did is I have a piece of four aught copper wire in there. And the reason of this is this is an old three jaw. You can still dial them into zero, but the jaws are a little war. One fold and number two, when I adjust my outboard spider, if I had this guy clamped in my jaws, this wouldn't move at all. 
So this gives it an actual pivot point. You know, I'm only touching, you know, an eighth by an eighth of an inch, not even there. And this copper will let it jiggle just a little bit, if that's a scientific term for it. <clears throat> uh, regardless, you'll get more adjustability doing it this way versus clamping it in the jaws. If you clamp it in the jaws, you're basically stuck with very little movement when you adjust the outboard gear. So I'm going to set this up. I'm going to go through and I'll indicate off my, my bore here, or my chamber. And I'm hoping that the chamber is, well, <laughs> it's probably not concentric, but it's the best thing I got to go off of right now. I'll do that, and then I'll check, I'll actually check this outside, it's got a little lip right here, I'll check that and see how that is to the outside here, and then I'll check my uh, shank. Uh, the guy that did this sometimes turned these, uh, this tenon length down concentric to whatever he was referencing on but I don't know when he did this barrel so he may not have done this at that time <clears throat> my main indication is going to be off the chamber here and I'll just stick a little dial indicator in there in chamber or in, uh, run it out to zero and then I'll go out on my uh, bore end and stick a range rod in the end and then I'll dial that guy in so I'm going to get that set up and then we're going to start with actually cleaning this guy up here. <clears throat> Alright, so I got it dialed in with a 1 on thousandths indicator here. And you can see we're getting maybe a couple ten thousandths. I don't have a ten thousandths indicator. And we're rolling here about an inch. And the uh, measurement's going to change because there's a taper on the case. And let's see, that's pretty close. I was moving, sorry. And right there we're getting maybe a, well it's not even really moving, but maybe a ten thousandths. <clears throat> and then on my uh, muzzle end I got uh, less than a thousandths run out, so. <clears throat> you know, if we were doing a chamber here, we would uh, do this a little different, not too much, but being that I'm, all I'm doing here is uh, cleaning up this cone, I'm not going to worry too much about this, and I'm hoping. But let's check and see how close our uh, outside dimension is here. All right. So there we're at about ten thousands. <laughs> oh boy. And of course we're hitting that thing there, but move this back just a little bit. So there we're at four, three, two, zero, or went down to pretty much zero, back up to five, so we go from just under seven to back up to seven, so about seven. Well, let's measure here. Just over 15. Swoop back around. Nineteen. Fifteen. There's four or five. So there's at least five thousands difference between our outside of our so theoretically okay let's think about this theoretically these threads should have been turned concentric to the bore and this chamber should have been it could have a run out too but or a oblong case but uh, I don't know anyways what this tells us is that something went wrong here between threading and chambering Something's not lined up. We're four thousands out, five thousands out, whatever it was. Six. It was like seven thousand of them. So, not the greatest uh, thread and chamber job here. It's actually quite poor, but 
I'm not gonna mess with this right now. All I'm gonna do is clean it up, so let's do that. <clears throat> All right, I sat over this thing, uh, sat on this thing overnight, and I went back and forth as to whether to do more work to this thing or cut it off, rechamber it. <clears throat> but I think what I'm gonna do is just clean it up and see how it shoots. It is six or seven thousandths off between the chamber and the threads, and without uh, the correct um, rod to stick all the way down into the throat, I can't really tell. But the chamber isn't ovaled out; it's just, I mean, it's it's perfectly within an inch, inch and a half of from the end to halfway in. It's uh, it's very concentric. <clears throat> but it's just not concentric with the threads. So, uh, if I was doing this for somebody else, I would cut this off, rethread, rechamber, and try and get it down to, uh, you know, you want them to be absolute zero, but if you can get down below a thousandths, half a thousandths between your thread and your chamber, you're doing pretty good on most hunting rifles. Uh, if you're going for bench rest accuracy, of course, you want uh, as close to zero as you can get, but. This barrel is probably halfway through its life, and I don't know if it's worth the work to set it back and rechamber it. So, so this is what I'm gonna do. I got my a little bit set up here, and this is a, a, a high-speed steel bit, and I got it set up to. Uh, they make 96 degree uh, cone reamers for these from like PTG and Climber and all those good guys. Uh, or you can just set your compound and cut it with a bit like this. It works just as good. Um, my bolt nose clearance is okay. But, like I said, this is a... I'm going to clean this cone up. I'm just going to take a minimal amount off. If we have a little extra clearance between our bolt nose and the back of the barrel, it's not a big deal. You don't want it touching it anyway, so it's... Uh, we're just going to end up with maybe another thousands or so. And it's at about 10 or 11 thousandths clearance now, and another thousandths or two isn't going to hurt it. It'll be very close to within specs. Also, another thing is I'm going to come in here after I'm done cleaning this cone up and, and polish a chamber up because the chamber looks horrible, in my opinion. It's very rough and there's some scratches in there. I'm going to clean it up and uh, do that. So let's get started here. I got my compound set at... Uh, it's 48 degrees because the 96 degree cone reamers they're 96 degrees this way so they so you half that and you get your your half you can cut these cones any I've seen them cut anywhere from 42 to 48 degrees so uh, if you get anywhere in there you're okay I think they're specced out at 45 for these end fields so but let's cut it and hope we get and I'm hopefully I'm not going to be in your picture here, but what we want to do is get in there. And remember I said I didn't want to cut further. Okay, we didn't cut there. So I didn't want to cut any further into my chamber, but I do want to come out. Okay. So there we go. That's as deep as I want to get it. So I'm just going to slowly come out, and i got a nice sharp bit here, and we'll see how straight our, and I know I'm going to end up cutting this off center, but or it'll be off center just slightly, but ah, there we go. So that's the 